Justin. And I'm Andrew. Uh, we did a proximity alarm for our final project. So the system requirements of this project were, um, there were two different states. One, either the, the alarm was armed or it wasn't armed because you don't, if it's a alarm for your house or something, you don't want it on when you're in the house. Um, so when it's in a, when it's armed, it has to be able to detect motion. And the current state of the alarm is displayed on the LCD so you know if it's on or not. And then if it is, uh, if motion is detected while well, it's armed, then you have 10 seconds to uh, input the password. We have two buttons, and it's a eight sequence combination. And uh, it also had to, you also have to be able to modify the password whenever you want, so you can you can change it. And then also be able to save the password. So if the system loses power, it doesn't just reset every time. So you have to write that um, over the EEPROM there. System specifications. Um, motion is detected using the virtual body's PIR motion sensor. Um, sensor is interfaced with to the Jeep, uh, to the Arduino using the GPIO. Um, the system can be in one of five states. It can be an ARM, standby, detected, password set, and master reset. Um, the system outputs the current state to the LCD using the four-bit mode for the LCD. There is a green LED to represent when the system is in standby and a red LED to represent when it is armed. Um, password is entered using a eight-digit binary sequence using the two push buttons. And the uh, password is saved to the EE column of memory um, using uh, like what you said in the requirements to uh, sustain the password during a reset and uh, during firmware flashes or updates. This is the block diagram. Um, we have two external buttons that use pin change interrupts to signal um, when they're pushed. Um, the proximity sensor uses a external interrupt, and once that happens, it sets the state to detect it. Um, there is an external buzzer, which is uses GPIO, and uh, the LCD is used GPIO, and it interfaces to the 4-bit mode of the LCD. Then we have the two LEDs for uh, the use standard GPIO. Inputs. There's the motion sensor and the push buttons. The outputs are the LCD, the LEDs, and the buzzer. And here is the, the schematic of our system. Um, the password for the 18 Mega 328P, there is one kilobyte of EEPROM available. Um, this memory isn't like normal memory, there's a, a limited number of writes and reads to do this memory. So the way that we preserve the memory is we take the, the password and we compress it to a byte. And we store that along with a password key to verify that the password is valid or invalid. And this avoids um, loading a garbage password from EEPROM into our, our program. And we use uh, Multiple sizes of interrupts. So we have pin change interrupts for our uh, for the buttons for password entry. External interrupts we use for the motion detector and the timer interrupts we use so that uh, after 10 seconds, uh, the timer is off and it buzzes. Uh, software overview. Here's the uh, uh, five states of our uh, of our program. We use a uh, state machine, which makes it easy to. <coughs> enable and disable certain types of interrupts. Um, the, we first start the system and it starts in standby. And then from the standby state, you can get to the password state, master reset state, or um, uh, it can be armed. And the only way you can get to the detected state is from the armed state. And then since we have three different types of interrupts, we have three different ISRs. And then just in testing, just some of the things that were um, a little difficult to this project, we're just working with um, multiple types of interrupts, so interfacing all those together. And then also 
the EE e. prom was new. We hadn't really gone over that or anything, so uh, kind of figuring out, understanding that was also a challenge. I think that's it. Yeah. How did it go with the EE e. prom? Um, after doing some research, there are like ABR standard libraries for writing um, bytes and reading bytes of data to the EEPROM, but you can also do it just using uh, um, setting up register flags and then shifting data into the, the registers. That's, that's another way to do it, but there's also convenience functions that you decide to use that were in the standard ABR library. Which course did you take? Took the standard <laughs> library approach. <laughs> C function calls. Yeah. 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 Was the last feature to be added, so we went that route. Alright, so then we can bring it over here. It um, starts in standby mode. And since we've been messing with it lately, we don't really remember what the password is. So you can come over here. This is master reset mode. This right here, it basically clears the, the hex key stored in the EEPROM so it knows now not to load that garbage password and it loads the default password. Now we can come over here and set a password. And to enter the old password, since we reset, it's just all zeros. Password's verified, now we can enter the new one. We can just go all ones. Then it'll ask you to enter it again to make sure you, you know it. And then now that they match, you have set the password. And now you can arm the system holding these two keys down. Okay, nobody moves. Okay, so, so it got me. Put on like now we have to enter the door. password. It's going to be pretty loud. Gives you 10 seconds. There's the alarm. Now it's in standby mode. So that's it. Oh, I guess I could show you. Uh, oh yeah, and I, I could yeah. pull the power here. So the password was set to all ones. Now say I, I, I want to change my password. Now it's all one. So the password is verified as all ones. It shows it was stored between one power. And which is also nice if you uh power losses. I mean if like this was <coughs> if this stuff. yeah if this was actually gonna be manufactured you wouldn't have to have the user change their password during updates. So this will let you flash new firmware and then keep the same so create in the problem. So there, there we go.